Hello, welcome back. I'm Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. How are you doing today? <sighs> Can I see my new mug? I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> I was just gonna quit. I was really thinking about quitting. And I'm not talking smoking or drinking. Um, I don't do either one. You know, well, I might have a drink maybe, maybe once a month. Gosh, I don't even know if you averaged it out, it'd be less than once a month. But, you know, so yeah, <laughs> not quitting those things. I was reading um, Muddy Mint, that's their YouTube and their um, website, Muddy Mint. I started following her mm, this summer sometime. And the interesting thing was, I like looking at websites. I like to go on people's websites and just look at them and see what they're doing. Like, what is their take on, uh, what, are, what are they selling? And what are their soaps? And you know, do the, how do they wrap their soaps? How do they, you can't always see how they wrap them, but you know, like, you know, like what is their thing? What is their niche? What is their, you know, just to see. I just like to see those things. And so, um, do you see my flower? That's um, lemon verbena and that's my sage. I saved them from the garden. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I like to, I like to, you know, explore websites and just see people's, you know. So I was reading her little, blog thing that she had put on there and um like they like I think it was from last I don't know if it was last Christmas or somewhere and she was saying how they had had this meeting and they were going to expand because they're pretty big to a warehouse and have people actually make the soap they didn't have it they've been making the soap themselves but you know have you know hire soap makers for this and and she says but she walked out of the meeting and it wasn't like like she was excited and had all these great ideas coming up it was almost dread okay like what are we doing is this a good move or should we be doing this and she said you know it led to more conversations with her husband and you know and realized that you know she's like I am 50 and her you know, she's saying she's 50, her husband's 58. You know, they just wanted to, you know, take time, enjoy their time, you know, enjoy the kids before they flew the nest. All these things, you know, take trips and, you know, basically live. And uh, it was so interesting. But they basically, I think they closed up shop. You can go on the website and buy recipes from them. You cannot post the recipe. You can use it and sell it. You can use the recipe to make your own product, but you cannot sell the recipe. You not, cannot post the recipe, okay? Um, which is really kind of a cool thing. And she does have a book out that I'd really like to buy. It's um, like some of her soap making recipes too, you know, but... Um, she does everything with essential oils. So, you know, there's all this, it's a totally different niche, you know. It was really interesting to read that from somebody who was so big, right? Like she just started in her backyard. She just kept going. Her husband quit his job, you know, to help her make soap. My glasses are driving me nuts because they can never get them straight. <sighs> Seriously, you go in there and yeah. Okay, so I'm getting off tangent here. I'll just wear them down here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I can't see squat. But, you know, I've been so burnt out lately. Like, so burnt out. There are days I don't want to do squat. I don't even want to make soap. I don't want to do a dang thing. And I know that's not good, and I know that's not healthy for me. So I was going through my old videos, and I'm... You know, it's like, hi, welcome to what Tony's Witch Kitchen, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm so tired or I'm behind or time got away with me from me. And, you know, it's all about time. And I'm just like, good grief. Is that all you have to talk about? 
the thing is, is then I go on my website to add something or do some work on there. And then there's something on there and it's like ingredients coming soon. And it's from two or three months ago because I didn't finish the, the product. So I've been really trying hard to make sure when I go on there that I finish what I'm doing. But sometimes it's not always, I'm not always able to. It's just, it's just, I don't even feel like me. Does that make sense? I know that's a weird thing. But I keep telling myself, winter's coming, you know, I'll, I'll get more done in the winter when I'm not doing outside stuff. But the problem is, is I'm not doing outside stuff. I haven't been doing outside stuff in a while. The last thing I did was can tomatoes. You know, it's like, so I, I'm, I'm just basically lying to myself here that I'm going to get more done and be more productive when it gets cold and we're snowed in, which isn't actually true. I know that it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. We think that and then it, the year goes around and it's like, what the heck happened to winter? Right now I'm think, trying to figure out what happened to September because I'm still writing September for dates and we're halfway through October. It's just crazy. So I feel like I'm just spinning my wheels and I'm not getting anywhere. Does that make sense? Like I had all these plans for Christmas products and Christmas gift packs and, and I still might do them. Christmas I think will stay the same. My plan, hopefully Christmas will stay the same. But after I read Muddy Mint's thing, I kind of sat back and I was like, what do you seriously want to do? Like, what do you want to do? Would a soap shop make it easier? I don't know, because I know what goes into a business and it's a lot of work because it's not just making the product. Like at home, same thing. It's not just making the product, it's tracking your batch sheets. It's tracking those ingredients. It's you know, all this backlog of paperwork um, that I do try to keep up on, usually quarterly, but <laughs> it's better than yearly. And, but it's a backlog. And I would have to delegate that soap shop because I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and be the seller. I know that's stupid. I don't want to be the person up front. Does that make sense? You know, but would a soap shop, would it give me more time? Probably not, you know? I mean, right now my full-time job is remote, okay? Uh, which I love. I, I'm very so blessed to have this job. <sighs> you don't even realize it, so blessed. Um, and uh, I can show up in my robe, in my PJs, and my boss don't know. <laughs> I make sure I don't show up that way for meetings, but you know, if I just want to have my comfy fuzzy blanket on me or, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, I can, I, which is a blessing. It's a total blessing, right? Vendor shows. So I've been doing, I've been doing vendor shows this fall. They suck. They suck, and I don't even have high expectations for them, okay? I know part of it is to get my name out there, but part of it is to sell inventory. So my basic thing is, is I have to make my fee back, and at least, so there's the fee, okay? Take that off, and then at least 50% of what I, of then 50% product. So I need double, I need like, Twice the amount of fee is how I figure it. I know that doesn't sound right, but it, it works out. But I, I haven't made it yet. I haven't gotten close yet. And that's really, really bad when you're selling a product that you have to invest ingredients for and make, and then you're not making it back. They've just, they've, they just suck. People say, well, it's an election year. That's bullshit. Sorry, it's BS. Because, I'm sorry, it's not because it's an election year. It's because groceries are so expensive. You're basically choosing between, do I rob Peter to pay Paul? Am I, you know, buying toilet paper this week? Or 
bread, cheese, and lunch meat this week. You know, it's bad. I shouldn't complain, but it really does suck. And I keep my prices low. Like I've, and that's another thing I look at websites just to see what people are charging, you know, just to find out. I'm, I know I'm low. I know I'm so much cheaper and some of that has to do with, you know, the area we live in. However, people are buying off of, I don't sell off Etsy, but you know, for their subs are, you know, almost twice the amount as mine are. I can't do that because I want everybody to enjoy having great soap. Okay. The problem is, is I don't have time for anything else. I don't have time to make cookies for my kids. I don't have time to make pumpkin bars for my youngest son. I don't have time to make granola bars for my middle son. You know, well, if they didn't eat the sun butter like it was going out of style, I'd have sun butter left over too. But, you know, there's just no time. There's no time to finish my, my youngest son's photo album. Um, yes, I still scrapbook um, because it takes time. I don't have time. And then, and then comes the question, what do I want to do? You know, I really sat there and thought about quitting for like two or three days. And I didn't do anything for Tanya's Witchy Kitchen for two or three days. And I missed it. And I was really sad. And I, when I was actually making a soap, I was like, I love doing this, right? I love doing this. But something has to give. I do I quit YouTube? But I like my YouTube. And it does bring me customers. It does. Like, thank you to everybody who has hit the subscribe button, who has liked the video, who has made a comment. I totally appreciate you. I'm not even close to, you know, I'm not even close to a thousand people right now. I'm just glad with the few I have. And very thankful for you. Very thankful. So I don't want to do that because I was thinking like out of a week, how much time does that take up? In reality, I'm making the product anyway, so it's not anything videoing isn't part of the problem. It's the editing, you know, and the cropping and, you know, all that stuff, right? But in reality, it's not that many most weeks. It's not that many hours out of the week, right? There are times where it is hours out of the week because there's lots of research involved and, and I'm looking for something specific and doing something specific. And those are, you know, special weeks and they're just, that's just how they are. I'm not a TV watcher, so I mean, it's really my time that I'm wasting, you know, on doing this. And I just say that because I've been told I'm on YouTube. So next year, what do I do? You know, I know I need to rearrange and I need to make changes someplace. I just don't know where. I have a few irons in the fire of things that um, some organizational helpers, not helpers, but like organizational techniques, some time management, you know, ideas. If you have suggestions, you know, let me know. But, I mean, in retrospect, you know, most people, I should have lots of time. I, I only put in 30 hours at my regular job, but I probably put in 20 to 30 hours for Tony's Witchy Kitchen. And that is spread out throughout the week. Plus, I have, you know, my sons, my grandkids, you know, all these other... I don't want to say obligations because they're not obligations to me, but things that, you know, you know, require that I am set to do, that I am going to do and follow through. And those just take up a lot of time. So I was ready to quit. I was ready to quit. And I guess, you know, the hard part is, is, um, I don't know how to say this. These are the consequences of dreaming my own dream and trying to live my dream out. Because for the longest time, all I was was a wife and a mother, and I was fine with that. 
you know. Not that I didn't do stuff, I did a lot of stuff, but I changed. I've changed a lot, you know, and so just because of this, and I don't think it's a bad change at all, but I was so ready to give it up. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, it's really not your decision, but if you have some suggestions, like I said, I have a few um, um, things I'm gonna try and do differently, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm gonna take this video and show you how to uh, figure out your soap molds. Most soap mold companies tell you how much you want to, you need to make a certain size bar. Um, but sometimes you don't want to make that size bar and you need to downsize or they tell you don't fill it to the top, but you want to fill it to the top, right? So I'm going to show you how to measure a soap mold and figure out how much batter you need, which will be quicker than this intro. So three things, dream big, be true to you. You are worth it. And let's go check out how to measure a soap mold. Okay, I just wanted to show you. So first of all, this soap mold is from Nurture Handmade, Nurture Soap, the old name. It's a 12 inch tall skinny silicone mold. And they tell me that the dimensions are 12 by 2.25 by 3.25. Okay, inside dimensions, outside dimensions. The capacity is 35.10 ounces of oils, okay? You gotta make sure you read that, oils, okay? So, move this over here. The 3.25 is all the way to the top, okay? That's all the way to the top. And I really don't want it all the way to the top. This is what this, they're saying the soap mold can hold. And this also depends a lot on how much water you use. Because if you are using um, like a three to one ratio versus a one to two ratio water versus lye, you're gonna have a big difference. You know, that's a few ounces, give or take. So. An easy way to figure this out, okay? So basically we're figuring out the volume of the mold. Yes, we are, you, volume. Length times width times height equals, it's either inches cubed or centimeters cubed. Now watching YouTube videos, I have to tell you, I can say that your math teachers did not make you make, did not make you label your math formulas because it is not inches squared, it is not inches, it's inches cubed or centimeters cubed, okay? If you wanna find a cylinder, so this is for a rectangle or square. If you wanna find a cylinder, it's pi r squared times the height. R is the radius. If you don't know what that is, you're gonna have to figure that out yourself, but that's for a cylinder, okay? but I don't want it exactly to the tip top, okay? Because I kind of run my water at 38% on the light calculator. Sometimes I do 35, which I should probably do 35. I think I would get less soda ash issues, but whatever, right? So we're not going to do this. We're gonna do 12 by 2.25 by three, okay? 12 times 2.25 times three. 81. Okay, 81 inches cubed. Okay, so we're working with inches. So just hold tight, inches cubed. So you can do this two ways. You can multiply it by 0.554, okay, times 0.554, and that gives you 44.87 ounces, okay? Or you can divide it by 1.805, 81 divided by 1.805, and it's crazy, 44.87 ounces. It's crazy, because sometimes I will do it this way, and sometimes I will do it this way. <laughs> ah, 
sorry. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to convert it to centimeters, let's say you don't have this nice little centimeter edge on your ruler. Okay. Although if you, you know, I don't, I don't see this, but whatever. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay. So we're going to go 12 times 2.54 equals 30.5. Okay. And I'm rounding, so it could give me a different 5.7. It could give me a different answer, just a slightly off. 7.6 equals, okay, so here's my volume formula. 30.5 times 5.7 times 7.6 equals, this gives me 1,321.26 centimeters cubed, okay? Centimeters cubed. So we're going to divide that by 28.35 because there's 28.35 grams in one ounce. Okay. 28.35. And that gave me 46.60. Okay. So you can see they're a little bit off and it's probably because, you know, my centimeters, I'm going off of, you know, that, which is, but it's close enough for me. So I'm like 45 ounces. That's where I would go because I would up this one and this one I'd probably do that. And, you know, like I said, it does depend on batter and all that other stuff. Okay. So I would need 45 ounces of batter. Batter. That is your oils, your lye your water, your fragrance oil, essential oil, and all your additives together. That's, so you punch it into the light calculator. You basically adjust the oils however you want and the water however you want till you get to your amount of batter on those things, right? I'll show you. Okay, so you just adjust it so this is 32 ounces of oils, and that 32 ounces of oils is going to give me 50 ounces of batter. And it does depend, because you know, depending on your what your what your oils are depends on your lye. What your you know, because I usually run 33 ounces of oils with a different recipe, and my lye is like right around 5.07 or something like that. So there you go. But you know, you just adjust it. So you go back and you would adjust it on here. You go back over here and you would adjust your oils. You know, go through it until you get to, till this is where you want it to be. This number down here. So wait before cold process cure or hot process cook. That's your batter. That's everything in there, okay? Um, some people say that your centimeters, um, I guess I didn't give you a good number to multiply that by. <laughs> one centimeter cubed is plus or minus equal to one gram. So for our upcoming, <laughs> don't judge my soap notes. <laughs> okay, so the iridescent snowflake, which is coming up in the Christmas soaps, that had 33 ounces of oils. It has 12 ounces of water. Um, it gives me 52 ounces of batter plus or minus, okay? And that goes in this mold. So I always know I'm gonna run 33 ounces of oils. To, and the 12 ounces is probably the 38%. I could do 35 and it would give me a less, but I was actually doing ghost swirls here, you know, changing up the lie ratios. Um, so that's kind of how this, that's why this is so off the counter. I don't think I have another one. Let's see. Okay, so my grape soda pop recipe is 33 ounces of oils, but it gives me 51 ounces of batter. 
even though, you know, you're looking at this going, um, that's not the right sheet. You know, I'm doing 33 ounces of oils because I've bumped it. But when I originally did this, I was looking for a 45 ounce, but I have 51 ounces and it goes strictly to the top, seriously to the top. And um, that's what that, that little bit of difference makes 12 times 2.25 times 0.25 equals times um, 0.553 equals, you know, so roughly four ounces of batter. Um, 51, four is close. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a crazy thing. It's, but it does, it does work. It gives me, always gives me a really good idea. That is how I find and how I find the ratios for my molds. Cause when I want to do a mini, a mini soap mold, if I wanted to do one that was only two inches tall. Okay. So instead of three. You just take your numbers, 2.25 is the width, that's the width across, times 2, okay? 12 times 2.25 times 2 equals, gives me 54 inches cubed times 1, whoopsie, wrong one, 54 times 0.55, and that 5504, oh, yeah. So that would give me roughly around 30 ounces of, of batter, which is what I get when I make the baby um, all jacked up in here. I was gonna see if I have a, okay, here's my rendezvous. That's 20 ounces of oils. Eh, it doesn't tell me. Yeah, okay, so when I do 20 ounces of oils, I know it gives me 30 ounces of batter. So looking at that, if I was gonna make my mini all jacked up, I would know that for 30 ounces of batter, I need 20 ounces of oils. I wouldn't even have to look it up. So that's how I do that. I know it's a lot of math and it seems like a process, but it's it's really not. Really all you have to remember is, like I said, I like, I like inches, but you can convert it. I just don't like the whole centimeters plus or minus. You know, you can do that. I've talked enough on this. So if you have any questions, let me know. This is my easy formula. It works pretty much every time. Um, I probably should have done the 0.325 so, so you could see that it wasn't, I'm not just really off my rocker on this. <laughs> but anyway, here are the formulas if you wanna take a nice cute little screenshot for your convenience. And as always, I hope you had a good time. Thank you for dropping by. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>